welcome to my kitchen. This is Cooking Today. Hi, welcome to Cooking Today. I'm glad you're here. We are in the throes of summer and I have got one of the greatest recipes for y'all today that is so light and healthy and good for you and fresh. We've got tons of ingredients and look, I've even got out my food processor, which we haven't even really used yet. I usually just use my, you know, my mixer or my blender. We're making a delicious chimichurri sauce over grilled shrimp and this stunning, I mean stunning tomato and cucumber and goat salad with a balsamic on the top. It is so good. And I have a little fun surprise ingredient in there that I can't wait to tell you about that makes it kind of over the top. But we do have lots going on. Look, all kinds of things measured and we've got stacks over here. So let's start with a little bit of prep so that we're ready to go when it's time. Now we're gonna grill our shrimp, which is so easy, y'all. And it only takes about two and a half minutes on each side on a hot grill. So the shrimp is gonna be the very last thing that we do after we get everything else ready. Um, even though, you know, it's kind of the meat you know, main dish part of it. Um, but because it cooks so quick, we want to kind of get everything else going. Now I'm going to do this, um, my shrimp on these little wooden kind of bamboo skewers. And one of the things about these little wooden skewers that you want to be sure to do is soak them. And by soaking them before you grill with them, it keeps them from burning up on the grill and you know kind of catching fire because you are like right there on a flame so you really want it to be more like a wet kind of a damp skewer so we're just going to let them soak and set those aside for just a little bit oh goodness y'all look i'm moving this with water in it slow and steady slow and steady okay there we go Whew. okay those are just going to soak right there and then when it comes time we'll just drain the water right off and we'll use that same tray to thread our shrimp on our skewers. So that is just going right there. This is a really great shrimp tip. Now you know as well as I do, we live in Arkansas, so it's not like there are people with nets catching shrimp. Do you catch fish, shrimp with nets? I think you do. You catch, there are no people with shrimp nets or whatever close. So all of our shrimp comes into us from the ocean and it's frozen and I'll tell you what Harps has these really great shrimp and these are actually in the frozen foods not not in the deli part which are in the butcher part they do have some beautiful shrimp there too but these are some shrimp that are so pretty and they are in the freezer bags they're 31 to 40 um, in the pound and they're really really hearty and so what I like to do is buy the ones with the, the tail on and the shell on and then I just pull the shell off myself. Um, and one of the ways that it's, this is a great little tip for cooking with frozen shrimp. Some people don't like frozen shrimp because the texture is a little bit funny when you thaw it, because you know you thaw shrimp under running cold water. So what I did was I thawed this from the running cold water and then I just put it on a rimmed sheet and it had a paper towel underneath it and let it just continue to kind of drain and I put it uncovered in the refrigerator for them to really almost dry back out. Because if you cook with them directly from when they were wet, they've kind of absorbed the water and they're a little bit mushy and mealy and they aren't that good hearty kind of meaty flavor that we really like about good Gulf shrimp. So what I've gotten here is I've gone ahead and thawed, I've let them drain, and these have actually been in the refrigerator most of the morning. But I'm just letting them sit out for just a few minutes until we're ready to peel them and thread them on our skewers. But that is one of those great little things that helps you to know um, so that you can really enjoy frozen shrimp up here in Arkansas, you know, since we don't have, have the fresh. So we are going to grill those shortly. But what I'm going to put on this is a chimichurri sauce, which is kind like in the camp of kind of like if salsa and pesto got married and had a baby 
it would be kind of like a chimichurri sauce. It is kind of like in the pesto family in that pesto generally start, is mostly basil. And most of the time, most of the time a chimichurri sauce has primarily pa uh, parsley in it. And I, we are not a huge fan of how parsley tastes. It's not our favorite around here. So I'm actually gonna do a little blend of arugula, you know, just kind of a peppery, nutty lettuce and some basil to kind of give it a little nod to a pesto. I love pesto, do y'all eat pesto? I've said, we used a little, let's see, a little jarred pesto before on here when we made flatbread pizzas. But we need to make homemade sometime because you really can't beat the homemade, it's so good. Um, but what's good about this chimichurri is it has all kinds of other great things in it. We've got a shallot and some garlic and all kinds of great things. And so I'm doing my little bit of prep on my shallots. I'm gonna go ahead and chop them up and chop a little garlic, and then when we come back, I'm gonna show you how we mix up this amazing sauce that's gonna go on top of our grilled shrimp. This is Cooking Today. Cooking Today, sponsored by West Rock Coffee Company. Hi, welcome back. We are making the most beautiful, healthy, and fresh summertime meal today. We are making a chimichurri sauce to go on beautiful shrimp skewers and the most amazingly beautiful, colorful showstopper of a tomato salad with goat and shallots and basil and a little cucumber. It is so, so good and pretty. Y'all wait till you see how pretty that one is. Okay, we're gonna make a chimichurri sauce. Now let me tell you a little bit about this. This is a sauce that you really probably need to either make in a food processor or in more of like a mini blender. You know, you can, you've can you seen big blenders and then there's some that are a little smaller. Um, because a full size blender just really could, doesn't quite do the trick on really incorporating it and really giving it a good whir. This is gonna become very liquidy and green and gorgeous. Um, and so that's why I've got my food processor out because it does the trick better than just a regular blender. Okay, this is a, this is a store bought box of washed three times. They said it, so I'm not gonna wash it. Arugula. And I'm going to do, it's about three cups, but we're gonna call that one cup. I think I threw a little bit over the side. Um, Basically what I'm doing is kind of just filling my bowl. I can kind of just see, you know, when it's nice and full. There, isn't that pretty? I'm gonna go ahead and put that little guy in there. Three cups or so of arugula. And then you could add parsley to this if you would like to. Like I said, a lot of recipes have parsley in it. We are just not parsley people. I don't, I just, there's something about it that I don't love and so I don't put it in here but I do love basil and I love a pesto, which you know is basil based. And so just for the sake of the flavor that we do love, you know, it's kind of licorice-y. Mm, so good. I'm just putting a couple of leaves in here. I'm not even gonna count and it's not even an official recipe. I'm just plucking a few off of this one little stem just to get some in there. I love the variation of the flavor of that arugula, kind of peppery and nutty. And this good, good basil. Okay, so these are our greens. That's all we're gonna start with. And then I was cutting a shallot when you all left and came back. So I'm putting a shallot in there. This is kind of up to you. I mean, shallots kind of are not all created equal. Sometimes they're itty bitty ones and sometimes they're kind of big hearty ones. So this is probably one of the bigger, probably equal to two small shallots. And I use a shallot in place of a red onion because I just, I like the flavor. It's a little bit more mild. And since we aren't gonna, you know, we're not cooking this, we're just gonna whir it up. And so, we, you know, you just kind of wanna go with what flavors that you like, because we're not gonna cook out any of the flavor of that onion. So that's why I opted for shallot, because it's a little milder. And then I did three cloves of garlic. Now listen, I have seen recipes for chimichurri, for chimichurri that have eight cloves of garlic in it. I think it's Emeril Agassi's recipe maybe. I can't remember where I saw it. That is a lot of garlic. <laughs> a lot of garlic. So I have settled on three. I really love garlic flavor, but 
eight is a bunch. And so I like the three. And then I just have a big old large lemon. This is a big one. You know, Harps has these giant lemons. And I'm just catching the any seeds that might come out. And you know, the trick, roll, get, a, get a lemon at room temperature first, and then give it a good hard roll with your arms so that it breaks up and loosens those little pockets. And then it makes it really easy to get all of that liquid out. This one actually doesn't have a whole bunch of seeds. That's kind of nice. Okie dokie. Just juice of one lemon. And again, a pretty good size one. If you we're kind of going for maybe one, one or two tablespoons. So if you just have little lemons or ones that are not very juicy, then you may want to do two. Okay, arugula, basil, a shallot, couple of cloves of garlic, juice of a lemon, and then I'm gonna do a couple of shakes of red pepper flakes. I love the heat. This is very, very fresh and tastes very green and citrusy. And so we just kind of want that extra little note, especially with grilled shrimp. There's just something about having that little bit of heat in there. This is gorgeous. Oh my goodness, that right there, just right there before we've even worded up, is so pretty. And then we're gonna add in about an eighth of a cup of red wine vinegar for a little bit of tang. I love that vinegary bite. I use vinegar all the time around here. And then I'm gonna do about, about a teaspoon, probably about a, a scant teaspoon, not a whole entire teaspoon of salt, but close. And then we're gonna wear this when, we're, when we come back. So I'm gonna lock my lid. And then when we come back, we're gonna get this a whir. We're gonna slowly pour in our olive oil. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. We're gonna start on that amazing tomato salad that I cannot wait for you to see and eat. This is Cooking Today. Ice Tea, sponsored by Lipton. What I love most about the farmer's market is the music, the art, the food, the people themselves. Uh, that's local, that's Fayetteville. Local it means homegrown. My kids can run around, they can choose what she wants to get and eat. I like growing and selling directly to the public. And the market is kind of what community ought to be. Visit us Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday on the square. The Fayetteville Farmer's Market. 100% local and love. Hi, welcome back to Cooking Today. We are about to finish up our chimichurri sauce that we have got going in our food processor. Let me tell you. What we're gonna do on your food processor, once we got all of our good fresh ingredients in here, is turn it on low. And then in this little hole on the top, we're gonna slowly drizzle our olive oil. Mm -mm -mm. And it just really makes it all come together. The liquid really kinda helps catch, catch those ingredients. And then I'm gonna give it one good little whir on high. There we go. And then it's the action of that really super fast blade really starts to pull all those ingredients, even down around the sides, gets it in there, makes it so smooth. Oh my goodness, y'all, smelling that? Oh my goodness, it's delicious. Now, if y'all use a food processor, you need to be really, really careful because you know there's a pretty good blade down in here that we want to be really, really careful with. Okay, so we are going to put this in this um, little jar, and we're going to let this get in the refrigerator and let it just kind of chill a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and scrape down the side some. Oh, it's delicious. It is delicious, delicious, delicious. You can add more red pepper flakes if you would like to. Remember how I said that? Or you could, you know, zing it up a little bit more with some more lemon. Whatever you decide to do. But I would try it this way first because this is a pretty good recipe, y'all. And let me tell you this. It can store in the refrigerator for several days. If you were to make a flank steak, like a really good grilled, yummy flank steak, this is amazing on top of a flank. It's so good on shrimp tacos. I mean, it's just fresh and delicious. So 
So I'm going to set that there. Actually, I'm going to put it back here real quick. You would normally stick that in the refrigerator, but I'm going to go ahead and just let it sit a minute. Okay, we are going to make this gorgeous salad. Y'all don't look in my sink. I would wash the dishes if you were not standing right there, but okay, pretty, pretty salad. This is kind of I don't know, I almost called it like a caprese salad, which is like, um, you know, tomatoes and mozzarella and basil, and it usually has like a little vinaigrette on it. So it's very similar. Let's call it like the cousin. It's like the first cousin to a caprese salad. This is so easy, y'all aren't going to believe how quickly I'm going to pull this together. I just kind of wanted to do my own little spin on it of some of my own personal kind of favorite flavors. So, I have gotten a, just a, I don't know, regular old little container of these little Campari mush, uh, tomatoes. You can use whatever tomatoes that you would like. My goal here is to have a couple of different flavors and colors and sizes because it really just makes it pretty and interesting on the plate. And, you know, every time you have a different little variety of a tomato, you get a different flavor. You get a different consistency when you take a bite. Okay, so look, we've already got our little red tomatoes on there. Those are called Camparis. And then they had this really neat little container of just kind of a variety of heirloom tomatoes. Several sizes, several shapes, several colors. And so I am cutting these up as well. Look how pretty they are as we lay them around. And see this little one is a little bit greener on the inside. And then what I've got, let me tell you about this goat cheese that I am seriously in love with right now. Um, and I get it at Harps, you know, they have a really great little cheese section. It is goat, which you know, I love goat cheese. I love that it's creamy. I love that it has that little tang. I, I just love it. We love it on all things. But they have these really good seasoned ones, like flavored ones. They're kind of infused. They've got a honey one and one that's like got all kinds of pepper in it, which is so delicious with crackers and little meats. But this one is actually garlic and herb. And you know, nothing goes with tomatoes and cheese better than garlic and herb. So I thought it would be really fun to put this crumbled goat in this yummy, yummy, like infused flavor in our salad. Are y'all looking at how beautiful this is coming together? Our plate is almost full with tomatoes. I may leave a few behind, but you can just load these up. And this is the key, is all these beautiful colors. Look at all those. Isn't that pretty already? We haven't even done anything. Okay, then I've got a leftover. I use these all the time, you know, English cucumbers that are they just have a little bit more flesh. They're not quite as seedy as the others. And this green is stunning in here. Y'all, this is a pretty salad. If somebody says to Ted that you need to take a salad to a picnic or you just want to have a little light something to put out with a pretty piece of grilled meat, this salad is the one. So I'm going to keep working on this. We're going to put cucumbers on in here. We're going to crumble this goat on top. Maybe even cut, cut a little shallot. We'll do some of that when we get back. And then I'm going to grill our, our shrimp that are just peeled and skewered. And so when we come back, we're gonna kinda wrap it all up. You're not gonna believe how pretty this meal is. So easy. This is Cooking Today. Welcome back. You should smell it in this room. Oh my word, I wish you were here to eat this with us for lunch. Let me tell you what we've got. This stunning, beautiful variety of tomato, cucumber, goat cheese salad. Is this beautiful or is this beautiful? So it's just those variety of tomatoes that I just halved and laid them all over this neat platter. We tucked in some really thin slices of an English cucumber. I did a little bit of a shallot, just real, real kind of paper, paper thin for that little tiny bite the onion, you know, gives that's so good. Then and I did that goat and herb goat cheese, that yummy garlicky herby goat cheese that I just kind of 
you know, crumbled and put around. And all we do after this is a drizzle of store-bought or homemade if you want to make it, balsamic vinaigrette, whatever is your favorite. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And you don't want it floating. You just want there to be just that little tiny bite every once in a while. And then I pulled the smallest leaves off of the basil, just the smallest ones, just to kind of spread all around for more color and flavor. And then, as easy as pie, we just shelled those shrimp, brushed them with olive oil. I just did a little bit of salt and some Cajun seasoning. That's all there was to it. And we put them on the grill for about two minutes aside. Nothing to even show you, it was so easy. And so we've got these beautiful skewers and this chimichurri sauce that we just drizzle right over. This is a delicious light dinner. It's a great little appetizer. Whatever you like, however you want to eat it, it is delicious and light and summertime good. Love every bite. This is Cooking Today. Cooking Today, sponsored by West Rock Coffee Company. Kitchenware is provided by Una Mays. Groceries provided by Harps, Hometown Fresh. Online Elements, sponsored by Fayetteville Farmers Market.